coming up on UGTV. Board of Commission meeting of the Unified Government of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. I want to thank you for coming tonight. I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll. Roll call McKiernan. Here. Mugia. Here. Johnson. Here. Kane. Markley. Walters. Here. Philbrook. Here. Bynum. Here. Walker. Here. Townsend. Here. Holland. Here. This, um, this evening, the invocation is being given by uh, Reverend Harold Johnson. We would ask for you to please stand and for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. We are instructed uh, in the Holy Scripture to be instant in season and out of season. And so in that manner, let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to come before you as the leadership of this government. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, kiss us with your grace both as legislators and also those that are our constituents. Lead us into right decisions. Help us to work together in the spirit of unanimity as often as possible. And most of all, Lord, help us to lead this county and this city into a place where the quality of life is improved for all of its citizens. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, Pastor. I would ask if, um, ask the clerk if there are any revisions to tonight's agenda. Yes, Mr. Mary, blue sheet has been distributed. Under section 16 public announcements, we have three items that will be announced at that time. All right, we do have some announcements tonight, so I just um, posted those 
and I will go through them at the end of the meeting. Tonight we have two distinct parts of our meeting, planning and zoning, and will be handled followed by the regular commission meeting. I'll now ask the clerk to read the required planning and zoning statement, followed by the items on the planning and zoning consent agenda, and I would alert the commissioners that at the end of that you will be asked if you've had any contact with any petitioners. We would like to welcome all present to this meeting of the Unified Government Commission. Members of the commission are Mayor Mark Holland, Commissioner Melissa Bynum at Large District 1, Commissioner Hal Walker at Large District 2, Commissioner Gail Townsend, District 1, Commissioner Brian McKiernan, District 2, Commissioner Ann McGee, District 3, Commissioner Harold Johnson, Jr., District 4, Commissioner Mike Kane, District 5, is unable to be here. Commissioner Angela Markley, District 6, is unable to be here. Commissioner Jim Walters, District 7, and Commissioner Jane Fieldbrook, District 8. As each petition is called this evening, all persons for or against will be given the opportunity to express their views. If this is the first time that a particular petition has been before this commission, the commission has three options. Number one, it can approve the recommendation of the Planning Commission with six votes. Number two, it can override the Planning Commission's recommendation, but it would take eight votes to override. And number three, it can return the matter to the Planning Commission for further consideration together with the statement specifying the reasons for the referral back to the Planning Commission. The consent agenda is the first part of the Planning and Zoning agenda. Items on the consent agenda have received a unanimous vote of recommendation by the Planning Commission. Unless there is a request to set aside an item from the consent agenda by the applicant, a member of the public, the Unified Government Commission, or staff, then the Planning Commission's recommendation on all items will be set aside and will be adopted by the Unified Government Commission at one time. I will read the list of agenda items on the consent agenda, and when I have completed the list, the Mayor will ask if there are any requests to set aside items from the consent agenda. This is your time to stand up and request that an item be set aside if you do not agree with the Planning Commission's recommendation. If an item is set aside, the matter will be discussed and voted upon separately. All items not set aside will be approved with the Planning Commission's recommendation. We appreciate the attendance of those people here this evening and recognize the importance of each petition. We will remind you that there are a number of items on the agenda and we would appreciate your efforts to make your remarks as concise as possible. We ask that anyone with a cell phone to please turn them off or switch to non-audio so you will not disturb the meeting. Once the petitioners make their presentation, anyone for or against will be allowed the maximum three minutes to state your views. As you come to the microphone, please state your name and city for the record. The mayor and commission are required to disclose contacts with proponents or opponents on an item on the planning and zoning agenda. I will ask if any members of the commission wish to disclose any contact with proponents or opponents on any item on the agenda. I would um, offer that I had contact with proponents for the um, vacation of utility at 2146 West 39th. Let the record show I see no others. I will now read the items on the consent agenda. Special use permit application item number one, SP 2015-47, Steve McDonald, Guyer Brady Mix, renewal of a special use permit for a portable concrete plant at 4313 Speaker Road, recommended for approval for five years. Item number two, SP 2015-49, Catherine Kelly, Special use permit for three storage containers at 4223 and 4225 Gibbs Road, recommended for approval for two years. Item 3, SP 2015 50, Janelle Peterson, special use permit for a bread and breakfast at 3200 North 115th Street, recommended for approval for two years. Item 4, SP 2015 51, Michael Yeager, Home Occupational Special Use Permit for the Making of Yard and Garden Ornamentation, 
Custom Automotive Parts and General Customer, Metalworks at 4855 Georgia Avenue, recommended for approval for two years. Item 5, SP 2015-52, Will Anderson with BHC Roads, renewal of two special use permits for a field site with recycling and truck waste scale at 626R North 47th Street, recommended for approval for two years. Vacation application item number one, UE 2015-10, Monita Ireland with University of Kansas, vacation of utility easements at 2146 West 39th Avenue, recommended for approval. Plan review application item one, PR 2015-21, Caleb Banday, Kim Design and Construction, Preliminary plan review for a convenience store at 4116 Metropolitan Avenue, recommended for approval. Ordinance amendments, item number one. Ordinance amendment section 27340, certain amendment to section 27340, planning and development of Kansas City, Kansas Code of Ordinances, generally concerning the definition of a dog kennel, recommended for approval. Item two, ordinance amendment section 27-726, Certain amendments to Section 27, 726, Planning and Development of Kansas City Code of Ordinances, generally concerning signs in the right-of-way, recommended for approval. Miscellaneous ordinances, item number one, an ordinance vacating a street at 4826 McGurk Street. Item number two, an ordinance vacating right-of-way at approximately 3717 Cambridge, Kansas City, Kansas. Item three, an ordinance vacating right of way at approximately 3717 Cambridge, Kansas City, Kansas. And item four, an ordinance relating to dog kennels amending chapter 27, article eight, section 27340 of 2008 code of ordinances and resolutions of the unified government of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. And item five, an ordinance relating to portable signs in the right of way amending cap chapter 27, Article 8, Section 27, 726 of 2008, Code of Ordinances and Resolutions of the Unified Government of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. Those are all items on the consent agenda. All right. Does anyone on the commission or anyone in attendance tonight like to remove an item from the consent agenda? Any item that's not removed will be voted on with a single vote following the recommendation of the Planning Commission. Commissioner Walker. Um. A2, item 2. A number 2, the um, C1. A2 and C1. All right, those will be re uh, considered in individually. Are there others? Move to approve all remaining items on the consent agenda. All right, let the record show no one else is moving forward to remove an item. It is properly moved and seconded. Roll call. Roll call McKiernan. Aye. Mugia. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. Bynum. Aye. Walker. Aye. Townsend. Aye. The vote is 8 to 0. That motion carries. All right, that brings us to item A2. Um, special use permit for three storage containers on Gibbs Road. Is there anyone here who would like to make presentation? Um, okay, that's fine. I'm Linda Siemens. Uh, did you need my address, or how do I introduce myself? Um, your rep yeah, for planning and zoning, we do request your address. Well. If you're rep are you representing A2 Catherine Kelly SP 2015-49? Yes. Three storage containers. Um, we're a nonprofit organization. I'm with Cultivate Kansas City. I'm the operations manager. Um, this is for our Gibbs Road farm. We are putting three storage containers on the property. Um, one will be used as a refrigerated unit. It will be used to store vegetables. Another one will be used to um, handle the vegetables and the third one for um, storage of tools. Okay. Commissioner. I was going to ask Mr. Richardson a question, um, which uh, the uh, spokesperson has answered. This is not related to the property 
in which we've got trucks coming in and out and dumping. Is that that's further down Gibbs Road? Is it? Yeah, I believe that there is a, a fill permit that's a little, or there maybe there's an expired fill fill permit a little bit farther down the road. All right. I have no objections. Is there going to be any um, screening of these from the road, in terms of? Is there any stipulation in this, Mr. Richardson? You might know the answer to this. Is there going to be like a wooden fence or anything that prevents the containers from being seen from the road? It's my understanding they're going to be set back on the property where you wouldn't see them. There, there's a. If you look at the uh, diagram on the front page of the staff report, um, it's my understanding that they will be back behind those buildings up along the front. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Okay. So you're anticipating they will not be seen from the road. Correct. Yeah. Well, I, I think you have to ask which road. Are you talking about they're not going to be seen from 635 or are they not going to be seen from Gibbs Road? From Gibbs Road. Will they be visible from 635? Absolutely. That whole no. operation is. Um, I live off Shawnee Drive. I go down that road every day multiple okay. times. There's no way you're going to have those storage containers there for very long without everybody being able to see them. It's just not possible. We are working with a board member who is also a, an architectural designer, and she's been working really hard at making sure that the design is right for what we want. We, we do want the place to look um, great. Um, the only design that will be right is if it's not visible from 635, which has a substantial amount of traffic. and. Whether it matters to some people or not, I care what people coming through our town think when they drive down 635. All right, I'm Storage facilities are unattractive by nature, in my opinion. So I'm looking at, and I will state just for the record, I have a long-standing opposition to storage containers in neighborhoods. Um, there is frontage on Gibbs Road. 635 and on 42nd Street. Um, I would just want to make sure that. Do we have a location specific for the containers? Well, on page 13 of the staff report, there is an illustration of um, how they will be placed. Um, and so the two of the containers, I was presume for the vegetables, will have a, another roof structure over them. Um, presumably for insulation uh, from the sun and they'll be up against an, a, a fence on one part of the property I don't have the site plan in front of me that shows me where they are but perhaps the applicant could tell us well I would think that um, is it part of the staff recommendation that they be screened from the roads adequately screened from the roads they are behind our main building um, before the main building next is a greenhouse, is it not? No, we have an office building. It's it's more of a house. And so the house between next, between next door to the greenhouse? No. No, it's it's Where's the house? We're, we're pulling it up here, Commissioner. All right, there's the greenhouse. There's 635. Uh, the the pointer is at the house, actually. The greenhouse is that big structure to the left. The, the two, those, yep. Yeah. Right. That's the greenhouse. So that area, yes, that is where they, um, not that far, but. That's where yes. they're going to put the containers. Right. I would just ask, as a stipulation, they'd be screened from view. And it looks like it's only going to be Gibbs Road, but I, I think we need to make sure those are screened from view. So. Okay. Do you have a problem with that stipulation on it? I don't think so. Okay. We've been talking about different ways of making it more attractive. Okay. Any other comments or questions? I would make a motion to approve subject to the uh, stipulation. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Commissioner Philbrook? I, I just want to say that I've been to that facility before, and I know where she's talking about putting it. Um, 
and you'll have to look for them to find them okay. in there. It'll pretty much blend in. All right, it has been properly moved and seconded with the stipulation. It'll take eight votes with the stipulation. Roll call. Roll call McKiernan. Aye. Mugia. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. Bynum. Aye. Walker. Aye. Townsend. Aye. The vote is eight to zero. That motion carries. All right. Thank you very much. The second item that has been removed is item C1. Plan review for convenience store at 41st and Metropolitan. Is there a, is the applicant here tonight? I do not see the applicant in the audience, Mayor. Okay, Commissioner, do you want to ask any question or make a, do you want to hear? I, I want to find out if I'm thinking of the same, same problem property that has existed for a long time. And whether I, show me where it's at on this map. It's the northeast corner of 42nd Metropolitan. No, I, this, this one has, has at times been a problem because of you its, speak into the mic, please. because of its, well, the same problem we have with 24th and Metropolitan as, as a distribution. Let's just say a lot of, a lot of trash accumulates around that building and they don't maintain it in a very sightly manner. Now, I just wanted an explanation of what, what this means. So, um, although the first name might be confusing, this is a different applicant than the, and a different owner than the 24th and Metropolitan site. Both architects no, are named I, Khalid, and both but, are. but it's different guys. Um, they, uh, they are going to be doing a substantial rehabilitation of this building and expansion of the building. Um, the page 18 of the staff report has the elevations. It will be a much improved look for the building uh, and the canopy as well. Um, as far as how they will maintain it in the future, I can't speak to the trash issue, but the, the structure itself will have a very significant uh, rehab to the structure and the canopy. Okay, well, I will defer, defer to the, well, I guess the commissioner well, for that location isn't here tonight. I would also note that there'll be one of the stipulations is to add a fence, the the typical commercial fence with the masonry pilasters and the solid wood fence adjacent to the east and north property lines. So that that too will help um, make the area a little bit more attractive. Good. Yes. Thanks, Rob. Mr. Richardson. Commissioner Marquia. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Rob, if you could help me with this, didn't we add a section? on property tax history. Has this a property had any property tax delinquencies in the past? Didn't we add a section to our packet? Well, if they were currently past due more than for two, if they hadn't paid 2014 taxes or previously, we would note those. Uh -huh. Otherwise, we don't note those in the staff report because they're all still payable this year. So if they were actually delinquent for, hadn't paid 12, 13, or 14, we would note that. So. We have looked at that, and if it doesn't come up on the report, I haven't I haven't looked into it any beyond that. Whether they've had past delinquencies or not, that's not ever been an issue. It is at the end of the agenda. It's the last item, tax status report. It says none of the properties in the applications to be considered had delinquent taxes prior to 2014. Just prior, just prior to 24. Or right. That's de that's what defines them as delinquent. Okay. So they're, you're just checking the current taxes, right? When you check on these properties. No, we we check for back taxes. So you'll sometimes see things that have taxes due from 2009, 10, 12, and 14. Because they'll pay before we change the policy. They will have paid some years and they haven't got caught, and that you have to pay the oldest one first yet. So. But do you reflect that if they've so, for example, if someone doesn't pay for three years and then right before 
the ability to put it into tax sale, did they, and they pay then, but it's paid, does that show up in this report? No, we don't do that because taxes aren't of something that are a voting criteria, so we haven't, we haven't put that much into it in the. Yeah, I understand. That's fine. Um, and then how many, um, or if any, did you see if there were any code violations or how many times they had been violated by our code enforcement department? I don't believe so on this one. Um, we don't typically check the tip, the plan review. We didn't have anything. We sent it to code enforcement and they didn't notify us of any outstanding code enforcement it, citations at the time. Mm -hmm. So we really deal with that, what's been outstanding and what's been there unless we, you know, we're aware ahead of time of significant issues. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll need to get with you at some point to, to go back over what is um, something we can consider during voting versus what we're not allowed to consider. I need a refresher on that, or maybe you could just mail, email me the criteria. Um, and though I agree with Commissioner Walker that this property at times has not looked very good um, uh, with trash and things that are very fixable, I'm not talking about major structural things. So I'm glad they're fixing up their property, but it doesn't matter if you fix up a piece of property if there's trash thrown all around it and it right. doesn't look good. And I, I don't know when they acquired this property either. That would be the other thing when the ownership changed because this may they may have recently acquired this to improve it. Okay. Well, that definitely makes me feel better. So I appreciate the answers. And if you could get me the details, that'd be fantastic. Thank you very much. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Roll call. Roll call. McKiernan? Aye. Mugia? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Walters? Aye. Philbrook? Aye. Bynum? Aye. Walker? Aye. Townsend? Aye. The vote is 8 to 0. That motion carries. All right. That brings us to our planning and zoning non consent agenda. There is just one item. It is uh, Randall and Barbara Van Bieber for keeping of two goats. Um, are the Van Biebers here tonight? If so, I'd invite you to step forward and make presentation. I am uh, Randy Van Bieber, 3415 North 63rd Street, KCK, and uh, I don't I haven't done anything else. I mean, everything's pretty much the same as far as me keeping the goats, animals. They want me to keep it clean, and we clean it every night, and that's, that's about it, so. Okay. All right, we will open up a public hearing and let people come and speak if they'd like, and then at the end of that, sir, you'll have an opportunity to come back up and make a summative comment if you would like. All right, is there anyone who is here tonight who would like to speak in favor of this application? Let the record show no one is moving forward to speak in favor. Is anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this application? Let the record show there's no one here to speak in opposition to this application. Um, we are, I will close the public hearing. And we are open for a motion. Still open for a motion. I move that we accept it as presented. It has been moved and seconded to for approval following the recommendation of the um, Planning and Zoning Committee. Discussion. Yes, Commissioner. I would direct Walker. this question to Commissioner Philbrook because I know she's been working with the committee uh, to deal with domestic uh, livestock. Uh, are we going to? Are they going to come forward with uh, some advanced and innovative ideas on dealing? <laughs> Um, I would I would like to suggest that the hooved animals will be number three in line. Uh, the next the next list of animals to deal with are chickens and rabbits. Uh, 
After the chickens and rabbits come the hoofed animals. So hopefully that's taken care of before his special use permit comes comes due again. Are you saying it would behoove us yeah. to wait for that? I would say that I wouldn't want to jump the gun and say anything more than I have <laughs> already said about hooved animals in town. We will have people coming in that are very uh, responsible and know about how much space these animals need, okay, when we put together our codes, and you guys will get plenty of chance to see those. I, uh, I am, you know, part of the initiative in, in living healthy and hasn't really mandated that we all have, you know, chickens and goats and cows in our yard to, you know, have sustainability, but, you know, I think there is a point at which we need to, uh, apparently the gentleman has done everything we've asked about the goats. I'm not getting anything in the documents to suggest there's been a problem or that the neighbors complain. But I wonder what it would be if everybody on that block had, had two, goats, had two goats, or you had chickens next door, and you know one guy had a little bigger yard, so he had a cow because uh, he wanted the milk. I mean, I know it's not happening, but we need to address those issues because I would not be happy with two goats living next door to me. I'd, I'll just be blunt about it. I understand. And I would I would be up here and you would be hearing me. <laughs> I, and I understand that. So my comment to you but is I'll go to two others would be <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, all all I have to say is is you choose your animal. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, I I'm just saying I'm I'm anxiously awaiting no. the next It all step. takes it uh, it all takes a lot of time because we have to go through all the codes plus not just the codes that we have, but the ones we don't have, and what is fair and safe for the whole community. And it just all takes time. And you are more than welcome to come help. Well, and I would say this, I remember, I think it was eight years ago that Commissioner Cooley and I took this on, and it got so complex between the health, health issues with KDH&E with zoning issues and with ordinances of what allows what there are multiple layers to livestock in the city limits yep. and it's um it's infinitely complicated it's very labor intensive and i would and i want to thank doug for making it available for us to be able to do this because we have a wonderful lawyer that knows what she's doing and understands and we have extra help in this area so we are going to be diligently starting up the rabbits and chickens soon we look forward to your report uh, thank you commissioner mckiernan i just have a couple of questions for rob as i look back through the planning commission materials there were some allegations brought up about potential mistreatment of animals previously kept on that property but it looks like in the last report that animal control had no problem with care of any uh, any previous animals is that correct that's correct and it appears that the staff stipulations are that these permits can be invalid if at any time they are in violation of city codes is that correct correct and it was also alleged that this individual had more than the allowed number of dogs currently on that property and that they were not in a fenced enclosure but allowed to run free was that ever resolved does he have more than the allowed number uh, when animal control visited um, he was asked to remove one dog and did so okay that's my understanding and animal control didn't have any problem with the enclosure or the containment of those dogs uh, when they visited there was not an issue with that thank you very much all right, so it has been moved and seconded, and um, we're ready for roll call. Roll call, McKiernan. Aye. Ugia. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. Bynum. Aye. Walker. Aye. Townsend. Aye. The vote is 8-0. to zero. That motion carries.
All right, that um, concludes our planning and zoning portion of the meeting and brings us to our non uh, planning and zoning. We have a consent agenda before us. Would any member of the commission or member of the audience like to set aside any of the three items on the non planning and zoning consent agenda? Move to approve all items. Second. Let the record show no one moved forward to remove an item. It is properly before you. Roll call. Roll call McKiernan. Aye. Mugia. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Walters. Aye. Philbrook. Aye. Bynum. Aye. Walker. Aye. Townsend. Aye. The vote is eight to zero. That motion carries. All right, that brings us to our public hearing agenda. Um, we have one item. It is the Dairy Farmers of America IRBs, Industrial Revenue uh, Bonds. And this structure, um, we have um, we have moved it through the normal process so that brings us to the authorizing the intent to issue the IRBs. Um, this is a, they, when I went to the groundbreaking, several of the commissioners joined me at the groundbreaking, um, which was a great event that was held at Sporting. They were trying to work on an agreement to have cows graze on the nice grass at Sporting. <laughs> There's no news on that agreement at this time though it seems unlikely. Um, but I will ask if the commission would like to hear this presentation. We are prepared to do so. Um, if you are satisfied, um, we would take a motion. Motion to approve. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm out of order. I apologize. All right. We can, open, we can open the public hearing. Is there anyone here tonight who would like to speak in in opposition to the issuing of the IRBs? Let the record show no one's moving forward. Is there anyone who'd like to speak in favor of the issuing of the IRBs for the dairy farmers? Let the record show no one's moving forward. We will now close the public hearing and now ask for a motion. I will make my motion to uh, approve the resolution for the IRBs in the amount of 46 million. Second. Is properly moved and seconded. Roll call. Roll call McKiernan. Aye. Mugia. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Walters. Aye. Billbrook. Aye. Bynum. Aye. Walker. Aye. Townsend. Aye. The vote is eight to zero. That motion carries. All right, that concludes our agenda. We do have three announcements that I'd like to make tonight. Yeah. We want to thank the gentleman from the dairy farmers for being here tonight. Congratulations. We look forward to the construction phase. All right. There are um, three quick announcements that I want to run through. The f you have them on the blue sheet before you. Um, a notice of need was posted for the chief knowledge officer position. That's the person who would oversee our innovation, technical, and open data pieces. Um, the decision was made to, to, to hire a recruitment firm for that position. That um, we've had a number of, um, in, we have had quite a bit of interest from different firms to s provide that search. Um, that is, do, those are proposals are due tomorrow. Um, but I did want to clarify some people had asked if this was the posting of the position. This is a posting of a recruitment firm. Um, and then that selection will be made and then the position will be posted um, after that. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. The facets group that did our fire study will present to this full commission on October 15th at 5 p.m. on the fifth in the fifth floor conference room. So that will be on October 15th at 5 p.m. on the fifth floor. Um, that's a much anticipated study and it will be a comprehensive study and a quite a long presentation. Planning updates. Um, BNIM and Trans Systems have been selected as lead consultants for the Rosedale Master Plan. That is in partnership with the Rosedale Development Association, the Unified Government, the Hospital, the Med Center, and the Endowment Association. Also, um, the ATA has joined that study as well and are going to be helping us because of the number of employees and the need for transit at that site. So really, we have a, a good team put together. There was a, there was a request for proposals, notice of need, and BNIM was selected by the committee to lead that, pr that um, particular master plan. Um, 
Also, the team for Vario, Olsen, and Gould Evans have been selected to work on the Tri-City K32 corridor and quiet zone studies. And so that's an effort that um, we received a grant from the Mid-America Regional Council um, to do that study, and that's, that group has been selected, and that study is underway. Um, I've never heard it called the Tri-City. It's like the Tri-Wizard Cup, maybe. It's a Harry Potter reference. It may be like that. Um, finally, White Smith and Associates has been selected to work on a sign code uh, revamp. So there's been a lot of interest by this group to look at our sign code in a comprehensive way, and that group has been selected. So those projects are all underway and wanted to make those announcements. With that, we are adjourned.